What's up guys, my name is Tyler. Welcome to another edition of The Lawn Review. Today, we are going through the ultimate fall lawn care routine for cool season grass. We're gonna cover everything you need to do to make sure your cool season grass is prepped for fall and winter and making sure that it's ready to rock and roll come spring. We're gonna talk about soil prep. We're gonna talk about seed, fertilizer, everything that goes into fall um, routine for your yard, we're gonna cover. Stick around and let's check it out. So step one of the fall lawn care routine is to essentially scalp your lawn. You're gonna cut it down to about an inch or inch and a half. What that's gonna do is it's gonna shock your lawn. Your lawn's gonna be like, what the heck? And take like a couple weeks to rebound. And later in the process, we're gonna seed and fertilize. And that's gonna give that new seed a chance to compete with the existing seed. It's gonna take a week, two or three weeks for your existing grass to bounce back after being after being cut that aggressively. But it's also gonna give this that seed and fertilizer a chance to make contact with dirt um, and the organic matter that's necessary to promote germination and uh, make sure you're, you're giving that seed's roots chance to hit uh, the soil itself. It's also really important in this stage to bag your grass clippings as opposed to mulching, which again, I've said to do 99.9% .9 of the time. Well, this is that 0.001% of the time. It would defeat the purpose to scalp your lawn and leave all those grass clippings on top uh, because it would, it would just provide more of a barrier for the seed and fertilizer to hit the soil. So make sure you're bagging your grass clippings at this stage. Guys, just to reiterate, definitely want to make sure that you bag uh, the portion when you're scalping your lawn. I filled up, let's see, seven refuse bags, completely full of grass clippings and um, organic matter that was just sitting on top of my soil. So you definitely want to make sure you uh, make sure you bag that. All that would have been um, on top of my soil and preventing the seed and fertilizer from uh, making contact. Guys, so now that step one of the process is complete and you've scalped the top surface of your lawn, again, making sure that you bag, uh, it's time to move on to step two of this process. Um, some of the cleanup involved, I would blow the grass clippings that you didn't bag back up into the lawn. You're just going to catch that on round two, so no stress there. All right, guys, so the next step in the ultimate fall lawn care routine for cool season grass after you've scalped your top layer of fescue or whatever cool season grass you have is to dethatch. So the dethatching tool that I'm gonna be using today is from Sunjo. It is corded, they have a cordless model. I'm gonna be doing a product review of this particular model. So make sure you subscribe and don't miss out on this one. I've got a lot of opinions on this tool. So thatch is a layer of organic material that starts to build up over time in a web-like pattern on top of your soil. It's often like dead grass and weeds and dirt and sticks that start to uh, build up because they do break down, but they break down um, often slower than you probably want them to. So uh, after it gets to be about an inch to two inches, you wanna go through and dethatch. So dethatching is a process that you definitely don't have to do every single year. I, in fact, I'd probably recommend it every other year. Um, but it's just a good way to kind of like exfoliate your lawn. You're kind of pulling up that dead stuff and allowing your soil to get light and moisture and those nutrients that you're about to feed onto it later in this process. So another tip with dethatching though, is you definitely want to bag this. Um, again, you do, it does no good if you just dethatch or pull up all that dead material and just let it sit right there. So this is probably one of the most labor intensive portions of this entire uh, project. 
is gathering up all the thatch and bagging it up in like a refuse bag or a, or a trash bag. This is, yeah, this one's gonna take you a, a little bit. So a tip on this one, if you're using the Sunjo dethatcher corded model, always start with the cord on this side and kind of work that way so you don't have to cross over the cord every single time you turn around. When I'll go to the end, the cord will then be on this side and I'll work over here. I'll have to hold it in one hand over here but it will keep it out of the way. If I were to work this way, I'd be constantly going over the cord uh, every time I did a pass one, one direction or the other. All right guys, so as you can see, we just completed the dethatching step uh, and as you can see, I pulled up quite a bit of, of thatch. Um, had a few unfortunate things happen during this growing season where I lost a good bit of grass. Uh, so I had a, quite a bit to pull up. Uh, but as you can see, um, we're going to have great soil or to fertilizer to seed contact um, after we complete the next step of this process, which is the aeration step. All right guys, so as I mentioned previously, the next step in this process is aeration. Now that we've cut the grass down really low, allowing for good seed and fertilizer penetration when we put it on later in the process, and then we dethatched, really uh, just helping that process even further, making sure we're getting good seed to soil contact. Again, you can't really grow seed. It's gonna, the roots aren't gonna go anywhere if, the, if it's not touching the ground itself. Um, so aeration, um, kind of helps with that process, but really helps with root development, helps with overall soil health. Um, essentially what aeration is doing is there's a multitude of different ways you can do this, um, but it's basically forcing, uh, cutting down into the soil to allow air down in there, aeration. Um, so you can use uh, like the scarifier attachment for the Sunjo dethatcher, uh, you can just change out the blades and put this scarifier on. That's essentially just gonna cut into the soil uh, about two or three inches down into it. Or you can use um, a plug aerator, uh, which it, I prefer actually. I think you get a lot uh, better results that way. Sorry, I'm getting bombarded by bugs here. Um, but basically, as you can see, there's little, um, like basically holes um, in the form of a tube that you just stab down into the soil and it pulls out a portion of that uh, soil. So you're really getting maximum amount of air down into the soil. I like to rate, rent a core aerator machine from Home Depot. It runs you about 75 bucks for four hours. It's kind of annoying because it probably takes you about an hour, maybe an hour and a half to do, but the minimum uh, time you can rent it for is four hours and it usually comes out to about 75 bucks. Um, if you don't have a trailer or a, uh, a truck, I recommend maybe contacting a landscaper to get them to aerate for you. It shouldn't be more than like 30 bucks um, for them to aerate, come out and aerate for you if you don't have the, the right tools. But again, you could always use this scarifier attachment. This is probably like, uh, this is like option A, probably option B, but it'll work. Um, it just might be a little bit of a mess. All right, guys, so now that we've completed the aeration process, as you can see, there's just a whole bunch of these little brown pellets basically all throughout the yard. Some people like to rake them up. I don't really bother with it. I went down and back a couple different directions, um, really a few different directions. I feel like it's good and aerated. We've we scalped, we dethatched, we aerated, and now the prep process is basically complete. All right, guys, so now that the prep work is done, you know, prior preparation prevents poor performance. Well, we prepped our surface, and now it's time to perform. So, guys, this year I'm going with the Pennington's The Rebel Tall Fescue Blend. I chose this because it's not like that Scott's, like, four-in-one, like, you know, the there's all sorts of different things in the seed. I, I really don't know what type of fertilizer they're putting in. Uh, it says it's for starter, but who knows the quality of it. This one is literally just seed. Um, and it has a really, really low weed content to it. So I know it's a, it's a good seed. 
um, and I can control the type of fertilizer that I put down. I don't really go for the whole starter fertilizer uh, thing. I like to just, you know, use my standard balanced fertilizer. That way I know that there's not like huge variations in um, the content of my soil. But um, I, I really like this tall fescue blend. Um, I'm using the Scott's broadcast spreader. Honestly, I do not like this spreader because the whirly do thing is below the height of the wheel. So it really like the fan that comes out of here is more narrow than you think it would. So you really need to uh, consider that if you're using this. I overlap way more than they recommend because of that. Um, because I know that the wheels are blocking this on both sides. Now Scott's did put out like an elite um, broadcast spreader that fixed that, but I haven't gone out and gotten that yet. So I've just compensated by, you know, narrowing my passes a little bit more, but I really don't like this. Um, fertilizer or this the spreader itself uh, the Pennington's recommends I think it's like 12 um, yep yeah, 12 for overseeding with this so 12 on the nozzle itself right here I like to go like 13 or 14 because I'm a wild man but you can do whatever you want um, I just like to put down more than they say um, I think seed is you know fertilizer yet yeah, you might want to be a little careful with it but seed I mean it, it you can crowd it out, I guess, but you'd have to put down a lot of seed for that to happen. So I like to do like a couple notches above what they say. So guys, I seed and fertilize just like I do when I mow. I basically seed and fertilize a perimeter. Uh, I turned the edge guard on on this Scott's broadcast spreader. I, I actually like that feature to it. I know that I'm not putting a whole bunch of seeds up into my beds, so I'll mow a perimeter and then just mow or uh, fertilize and walk a path just like I would when I'm mowing. So now that we've put down the seed, it's time to feed that seed. Uh, like I said earlier, I don't really go for the whole starter fertilizer thing. I like this Anderson's, I think it's 1648, uh, the ratio 1648. Uh, that's part of that 412. If you haven't uh, done a soil test in a long time, this is a great, um, just, you, you know, this is going to be a good ratio for your soil. Um, you might do a soil test and find out that you're a little high on nitrogen. Well, you know, just change. The Andersons has a whole bunch of blends that we can walk you through. Um, if you want to throw it in the comment section, throw a question in there, uh, we'd be glad to answer it. So this is what I like to use. This is what I've been using. It also has humic acid in it, which if you don't know, I'll probably put out a more detailed video on humic acid in the future. But humic acid is essentially, I think it's like this ingredient that they found that the Aztecs were using. They were like burning wood or something like that and found uh, that the uh, petrified wood or something along those lines uh, was a really good like acted like a sponge for them so it held on to a lot of nutrients and this is what they've uh, people have started to use in fertilizers or just putting down humic acid on its own it really acts like a sponge it holds on to a lot of nutrients it holds on to some moisture for you so that um, you know eventually over time it should replace the need for fertilizer but uh, putting it down the same way as I was with the seed uh, obviously Fertilizer is one of those things you want to be a little bit more careful with following the instructions on the back. I think this one said uh, four and a half um, on the little dial here. So I'm going to turn this dial to four and a half and just walk at a kind of a brisk pace. All right, guys, so we have scalped, we have dethatched, we have aerated, we have seeded, and we have fertilized. Now, the one of the final steps is to water. 
Um, I, I just checked my whoop. I've burned 4,800 calories today. Don't recommend doing this all in one day. I feel like I'm about to have a stroke. So we are at the final stretch. Just gotta attach all the water. All right guys, so I really like this Beehive um, water control unit. It's battery powered. Um, I will say that if, it's, if you have uh, any light exposure to it for an extended period of time, it can cut it off. Found that out the hard way when I went, out, went to the beach one uh, last year. It basically fried one of these units, so keep it covered. Uh, I use this like downspout thing just as like a cover for it, but uh, I lost a good bit of my lawn last year because of it. Uh, so just make sure that that is covered. Um, but basically the first go around, I'm gonna water it in pretty good, probably about half an hour, um, maybe 45 minutes per zone. Um, and then go going forward for new seed, for really the first two weeks, I'm gonna water it three times a day uh, for about 10 minutes a piece. So I like to do um, 6 a.m. noon and then probably about five or 6 p.m. just to stay on a consistent schedule. Um, and you can schedule with this unit. Um, you can schedule all that. You can have four different zones. I really just use one in my front yard and then, well, two in my front yard, two in my backyard. So yeah, it's pretty simple. I, I'm not really gonna walk you through it, uh, but basically you can just turn it on. How do you turn it on? There you go, set, set whatever time it is. And it actually remembers what time it is. That's, that's the time right now. Um, I started this at 8.30 this morning, so just keep that in mind. Um, maybe subscribe just because of the sheer dedication. Uh, I really have not stopped all day long. So uh, I like to do this Labor Day weekend because of the time, you know, that I get to, I, I get to have three days as opposed to just two still have a real job um but for some reason the, the weather wasn't cooperating and uh so i had to do it all in one day so it's not been fun but basically you can set the clock you can set the start times how long how often all that and then you can do manual if you need to do some watering like a lot of times my wife will connect one of these the third one that we're not using so she can manually water pots on our front porch and things like that Guys, my sprinkler of choice these days is the Melner XT. I've reviewed it in another video, putting it head to head against the Aqua Joe um, sprinkler, which is the same, actually the same company as the uh, Sun Joe dethatcher um, that we, or we I used earlier. Um, same company, but just obviously a different product line. But the Melner XT uh, is pretty ridiculous. Um, the, the options are really cool. Like you can get a really narrow uh, left and right and then you can control the width of coverage as well. So you got a really, a lot of options. It says 4,500 square feet, I think. Can't remember off the top of my head, but two of these are plenty to cover my front yard. All right guys, so we got water on the grass and the fertilizer, and then I'm just gonna do a few tweaks, make sure we're getting full coverage on the lawn, uh, but it looks so far so good. Uh, the good thing about doing it this early in the year is that if you do end up getting dry patches, um, and I'm getting wet, but if you get uh, dry patches, then you can just throw some seed down and some fertilizer and you're not too far behind. But doing it uh, Labor Day weekend really gives the grass and the roots enough time to develop and get real deep so that uh, they don't get knocked out uh, and a cold snap or something like that. So you'll really be prepped and ready to go come spring. So guys, we scalped, we dethatched, we aerated, we seed, we feed, and we watered. And now we just get to sit back and hopefully watch grass grow. If you want a written guide on this as well, make sure you check out thelawnreview.com. We've got a full written, uh, not just for cool season, we've got warm season uh, full year round, every month of the year what you need to do to make sure your lawn is looking awesome, uh, that you've got the best plot on the lot. Um, so just head on over to thelawnreview.com, join our email list, and you'll be sent, uh, you know, zones, uh, grass IDs, um, yes, a month-by-month -month guide on what to do every single month uh, 
depending on where you live, like what type of grass you have. If you're cool season, transition, or warm season grass, we got you covered. Guys, thanks so much for checking out this week's video. If you like what you saw at all, mildly entertained in the process, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Again, we're trying to get to a thousand subscribers. Uh, it's like one of the hardest things I think I've ever done in my entire life. So if you could help us out and hit that subscribe button, like and comment on this video. If there's anything we left out that you feel like you'd like for us to cover in a little bit more detail, or you felt like you watched it and you were like, wait, what? Make sure you throw it in the comment section. If you're confused at all, I'll do my best to clear it up. This is not an overly daunting process. I mean, it seems daunting when you look at everything that you've got to do, but I did it and you know, I'm a bonehead, so. Email us your before and after pictures. We'd love to have like a recap with you guys so that we can see um, some of the progress that you've had as you followed this guide. Guys, until next time, keep cutting. We'll see y'all again.